hi Judy from Witch Peacecraft welcome to today's video I am here to celebrate International Granny Square Day yes I'm not a big fan of granny squares but that's the way it goes uh, if I'm looking a little rough and ready I've just had a shower and come in from the garden um, got up early this morning I need to find when we let Saxon out in the big garden he decided to rip up one of my pineapple plants from my pineapple patch and chew on it. He is really lucky he did not cut his mouth because they have a lot of spines on the leaves and the baby pineapples that are growing. So Thing and I had to get out there and fence off the pineapple patch to keep him out because I have 11 pineapple babies growing in my patch. I'll put a photo of a couple at the end so you can see what they're like small if you're interested. Anyway, I am here to celebrate International Granny Square Day. So I made granny squares um, during some of my movie and stitch reviews, um, mainly because the movie didn't inspire me to make anything. And I've never been a big fan of granny squares and I've been trying to improve my technique. But with International Granny Square Day looming on the horizon, I realised I had enough to do a lap gan. So I decided to join them and I put them together for International Granny Square Day. That is my lap gan I made. I really like the way it turned out. I guess for me joining them is always the issue but I was watching um, Rose Lights Crochet this week, one of her videos and she'd been joining Granny Squares for scarves and I like the way it was. It was a single crochet granny square and I thought it was perfect for this and it turned out really well. I really liked it. I then, um, because I like to put a nice finishing border, I did a moss stitch border. I've recently learned the moss stitch thanks to Granny D. And I um, found, I am currently working on a project that has a moss stitch border. So I decided I would put it around this lap gown. And I am really happy with that. That will be a nice donation to Crochet for Cancer. Um, the square itself is something I do, but I have a feeling I have um, done this or adapted this from one of Creative Grandma's squares. So I'll put a link to the square. I think um, I learned how to do it and then I've sort of changed it to fit three way and the way I want it to look. But I definitely give her credit from where I picked up that skill. I know that's where I got it from. Um, for the border and the joining, I used, and I'll probably need glasses, I used Carnival 8 Ply Soft, um, which is a box store yarn. I've had it in my stash for quite a while. I had three balls of it. They're 80 gram balls and 153 meters. It is really soft. And yeah, I decided to use up some of my stash yarn for Scorched Earth Challenge. The squares are made out of scrap yarns that I have, hence the flowers and the colours just to use up a lot of the smaller scraps. I do recommend if you have smaller scraps, this is a great way to make a blanket. Just make some squares and when you have enough of the size you want, join them. I'll put a photo of this at the end with... Because Crochet for Cancer do packs of um, lap gowns with a beanie and sometimes there's never enough beanies, I decided I had enough scrap pieces similar to the blanket or the same as the blanket and I did a granny stitch beanie using the same yarn as a brim. Most of these colours, all of these colours are in the blanket. I haven't, I've got a couple missing because I ran out. But yeah, I really like that. It's a bit of a slouch beanie like that. Probably should have put it on a model. It's a bit small for my head. It fits, but it's very tight because I have a buff head. But yeah, I decided that would make a great um, pack with a granny stitch beanie and yarn. As I said, I'll put a photograph of both of them together so you can see and see how great it looks with all the different colours. I really do... Um, like putting brighter colors in there along with some of the darker colors so celebrating international granny square day 15th of august down under project number two well i've wanted to make this for a while and 
I had it in my watch later list, which is where I put tutorials that I've checked out and think I'll make that at a future date. And I went through my wool stash and I decided to make it. So I'm going to read it out because I know I will. It's the Festive Dragon Chevron Scarf by Gary from Urban Yarns. And here is my finished project. I love it. It is reversible. There is no wrong or right side, which is, to me, I don't make many scarves, is perfect for a scarf. Um, the only thing I did different to him, which is a tip I picked up from um, Bago Day a long time ago, is my ends get a little rough, so I tidied them up with a single crochet border all the way around. Now I have a picture of Thing wearing this. He loves it. He said it is really nice. I should probably put it for sale in my Etsy shop. It's a bit heavy for up here. And I'm not sure my son in London would wear it, being the hipster that he is. But yeah, it is gorgeous. So the yarn I used, and I don't have the tag because it's Bendigo Bloom Wool and they come with little tags and one of the balls, this one, came without a tag. I think it's called Sunset Burst or something like that and it's Bloom. And the corresponding yarn for the ridges, I used um, Marvel Spotlight Yarn, half and half, 50% 50, 50 acrylic, 50% wool and the Bloom is 100% wool. Now, they are both soft and wearable and um, putting them together it worked out really well I have never used the 50-50 before but I definitely would use it again it is beautiful and it's the first time I have used the bloom and I definitely would get it in other colors and use that again it is quite long I made it um, a bit over five feet because if you're going to make a scarf, you want it to wrap around or be able to do different things with it. And if they're a little short, that doesn't work for me. So, yes, highly recommend that tutorial. We'll put a link in the description below. The um, Festive Sh Dragon Chevron Scarf by Urban Yarn from Gary. It is awesome. I am contemplating making another one in a pinky colour. I've... Um, working out if I have enough yarn because for this project I used um, 256 meters or 280 yards of the bloom wool from Bendigo Woolen Mills and 275 meters or 300 yards of the half and half from Spotlight. So I've got an idea now of what I need if I want to make the same length. I've just got to see if I've got enough of the two colors in my stash. So that was my second object. This week, um, after our three-day lockdown, I went to back to what I call a rough day in my job, which isn't really rough. Um, we have a donation site on our webpage and someone had tried to fraudulently activate that by um, 333 times. And to fix the website, I had to go into each one and reject it. And it was from someone in one of those lovely little countries in Africa. Same name. Um, our website people now are fixing that up so they can't get in. But um, it's sort of like sitting there doing it. it was getting me down and it was holding me up from other work. But I got a phone call from our craft shop across the road from work. I had ordered some, well, I'd ordered these stitch markers. I spoke to one person and then... And they, were, they didn't have them and they were going to order them in for me and I, I had forgotten about them and they said they've arrived. Well, I'm trying to find the one I wanted. So I went across the road, not in a good mood, and these were the stitch markers they had ordered. They're from Knit Pro. Knitter's Pride. They're not what I wanted. I actually wanted these ones from knit pro in the large but i got normal stitch markers look i was in such a bad mood i thought oh, i 
can't take it out on these people. They try to do their best. And to be honest, these knit pride ones weren't cheap. Quite surprised at how expensive they were. I took a deep breath and I just paid for them. I didn't say they were the wrong ones. My thought was I can always put them in a giveaway pack for someone. I have a lot of these now. I really wanted the bigger ones from either Clover or um, Knit Pro. These are mainly for knitting and amigurumi. They are perfect for amigurumi. But while I was there, and because I'd had such a bad day and I was going to pay for these, on the counter she had two tea cosy books. One of them I'd been eyeing off on the internet quite a bit, and they're both the same. And I thought, you know what? I looked at the price, and if I had bought it on the internet, it would have cost me more with the freight. So I had decided to cheer myself up on such a bad day and I know that the craft shop had been in lockdown and they always struggle financially to make ends meet. I bought the Tea Cozy pattern book. It was $30, the big book of Tea Cozies. There are a lot in there that I have made and there are some that I haven't made. But um, uh, to be honest, when I went back to my office and had a break and looked through it, it really cheered me up because I like tea cozies, as people would know. So yes, that was my other acquisition for this week. I also got two separate emails from two um, I don't, subscribers or Yarny people about tea cozies. One record showed me a tea cozy they had found that they thought was really nice. And I actually have a similar pattern to that. So I'm thinking maybe I'll give that a go because it did look nice made up. And another lady contacted me about tea cozies in Australia. And I, I was really touched. I think it's really nice that people actually do watch the video and take notice of what I like. And when they see something, they not don't hesitate to shoot me a quick email and let me know. So I thank those two ladies um, Cindy and Leanne for um, contacting me. It was awesome and it did improve my week. So that was my excursion shopping and tea cozies. So I come to the summary in the end and I have a question for you guys. In 2019, before COVID, I did buy a lot of yarn online from a shop in Australia and thought I was a valued customer. A bit later down the track, I ordered some yarn and it arrived. It was poorly put together in the box. It was like thrown in there. They must have changed freight companies because it was left out in the damp weather. And I really was unhappy. And I decided to unsubscribe and I wouldn't buy from this yarn company again. Um, I was really quite angry. Look, I may spend a lot of money on yarn and seem like I have a lot of money, but I value every dollar. I had a very, um, I wouldn't say poverty stricken, but a restricted childhood and we were taught the value of the dollar. So when I spend my own hard earned money and it's not what I want because it's not my fault, um, that they didn't take pride in what they were sending me or ensure that the delivery driver left it undercover. However, a lot of states in Australia have been in long lockdowns and businesses are struggling. And this yarn company now has some of my favourite yarn. So my question to you is, if you have really poor customer service after being what you thought was a valued customer and spending a lot of money with them, would you not buy from them again or would you give them a second chance? So my question is, do I give them a second chance and get the yarn that I love locally or do I keep bringing it in from overseas? It's about the same price. The price is not the issue, the freight, the price. They obviously pay what I do, but do I support local businesses and um, just put it down to a bad experience and give them a second chance? Leave your answers in the comment below. I'm really interested. I do know another um, Yarny podcaster who will absolutely refuse to buy 
from a company now ever again because I had such bad and poor customer service. And, and then I'm sort of like that. I'm a true Tory and I'm stubborn. If you're not going to value my custom, my money, what I, my patronage, then I'm just going to not say too much and walk away, which is, makes me feel better. Anyway, guys, that's it. On a cheerier note, I am having fun. And uh, because of the emails about tea cozies and the new tea cozy book, I may be inspired to get out there and make more. I know I am inspired to make more amigurumi. And thanks to Rose at Rose Likes Crochet. Well, she re released the Lovey Bug this week and I think it's made its way down under and I may have to make some more loveys. So until next time, stay safe, take care. And remember, life's an adventure so you can have one yarny adventure every day. Bye for now.